to the next day, 0420, get up, train hard. Before that, I think we did a 933 kilometer adventure triathlon. So it was a paddleboard east to west coast of Scotland, cycled 790 kilometers, and then ran a marathon. Chucked all my kit in the Solent, uh, the Bergen in the Solent, swam across the Isle of Wight, got out the other end, dropped down half the weight, and then ran 70 miles around the Isle of Wight. Daz Hardy, how are you, brother? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm absolutely firing, mate. Um, I'm I'm in utter awe, probably along with the uh, rest of the world, at, at your latest world record. Yeah. Um, before we do that, Daz, can you just tell our friends, uh, just give our friends at home your military background so they know who 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 we're talking to today. Yeah, absolutely. So I spent 15 years in the British Army. Um, I was a soldier and an officer. Um, I was discharged medically in 2017, um, four years actually to date, and um, four years ago uh, by a shoulder injury and, and also PTSD. Yes, you were in the thick of it, weren't, weren't you? Are you able to tell us a quick bit about the, was it the helicopter crash, wasn't it? Yeah, so um, 2006, May 2006, um, uh, Lynx uh, carrying friendly forces was shot down. Um, and um, yeah, it was just uh, we, we were on the, on the cleanup party of that. So it was the, the picking up of the bodies, et cetera, so on and so forth for, for, for 37 hours, actually, was taking quite a lot of heavy incoming. So um, yeah, it was, it was a nasty op. But that never really bothered me back then. So I was a young 20-year-old keen sapper, you know, and it was 2015 when I was an officer at this point and, and a girl had fallen into a fire um, in Canada on a training exercise and, and it, was, it was us that saved their life and it was that smell of the burning flesh that, that triggered the, the incident in 2006. So 2015 um, was a bit of a tough year. We diagnosed in 2016 um, with PTSD uh, and then, yeah, just sort of downhill from there. And like all veterans have the power to do, we're right back up there, mate, aren't we? Get back up there. And that's the, um, you know, this is why I do these multi-day endurance events uh, was the initial you know, reason for doing it was sort of, I call it my medicine, you know, and it's, I changed my whole life around sort of 2018. I was in a very, very dark place. I'm wanting to swear, like, call it a day, pull the pin in essence. And it was um, having a family that, that stopped me from doing that. Um, but instantly, overnight, I, I changed uh, from, from sitting in Tesco's car park, crying to my uncle on the, on the phone, um, telling him probably what I was wanting to, planning to do. And so the next day, 0420, get up, train hard. And that's my sort of medicine. And then always have a focus, a goal going forward, i.e. These, these events that I do. Routine, mate, is so important, isn't it? You know, daily routine, mate. It started with some contact coffee as well. <laughs> that's, if that's a plug, mate, I want half. <laughs> Never thought I'd chuck it in, but you know them. I like it. They're your guys, anyway. So, yes, yes. Is it, is it a wet. Yes, everyone's jumping on the coffee thing, aren't they? Sorry, yeah. sorry, contact coffee. I shouldn't say that, but I've been approached a few times. Um, uh, so. Just, uh, again, so I'm putting all this on you so I can be lazy, but do you want to just give us a quick rundown on, on your challenges to date? Because you've certainly put yourself through the mill. Oof, to date, um, the Yukon Arctic Ultra, which is minus 53 up in the high in the Yukon. Um, cool, what we got next? What we do next? We, we did the, a, the, the oxygen chamber thing. We, yeah, we did the world's highest duathlon. I like to say we when I do this because I've always got a good supportive team around me. So um, I like to keep it as we, um, but generally it's solo me doing it um, just, just for the viewers. So um, yeah, so that was uh, the world's highest duathlon, 190 kilometers in a 12 and a half thousand feet with a, with a mask on. Um, 
Before that, it was 10 ultra distance triathlons in 10 days in 10 locations. Um, that was pretty, pretty epic. Before that, I think we did a, a 933 kilometer adventure triathlon. So it was a paddleboard east to west coast of Scotland, cycled 790 kilometers, and then ran a marathon. For that, I think I ran 75 miles in a tre- on a treadmill with 30 pounds in my back for VE Day last year. Um, and that was in, in complete darkness. I had a little red light in front of me. That was that was very, very hard. There was no change of, you know, um, on a treadmill, you can imagine, in, in a 12 by 12 tent as well. There was no change of uh, terrain. It was just that constant battery. My, my Probably one of my biggest recoveries from that because of my legs and the swelling on it. Um, I did a 54 mile tab with, with 52 pounds in my back, uh, chucked all my kit in the Solent, uh, the Bergen in the Solent, swam across the Isle of Wight, got out the other end, dropped down half the weight and then ran 70 miles around the Isle of Wight. It was about 36 hours of constant hell. Um, and I've done a few other things. So, so earlier this year, I ran five marathons in 50 hours over the South Downs coast um, from Sandbanks just past Weymouth and back, uh, 4,000 meters of elevation. I did it in 43 hours, but I had to finish at the 50th hour because there was um, the family that was raising the money for were coming. My family were coming. Uh, media was going to be there. So I just got my head down for five hours towards the end of that and then did, did the last sort of um, NK. <laughs> so it was quite, quite funny. And then the most recent, which is, so this one I've actually applied for the world records, um, whereas the previous ones, like the world's highest draft and that, I just couldn't be bothered, you know, they don't mean anything to me. Um, it was someone said to me, why don't you apply for this? And your, your kids and grandkids will know, appreciate it. And eventually, and because T-shirts, hats, medals, none of that stuff bothers me to you know of, I have a couple of gold medals as well from, from sprinting um, in, in Colorado. And they're just, I don't know where they are. They're tucked away somewhere. None of that stuff sort of means anything. The tangible stuff, it's the, it's the do it, complete it, forget about it, move on, is, is my sort of attitude towards it. So, yeah. And um, so, can, can you tell us what it involved, Daz? Yes. So my last one, um, there was a couple of world records set on that one, which was the furthest distance dragging a car within 24 hours now loads of people have done this but if you're going by the guinness world record and i say loads of people a couple of people have done it um like ross edgley told a marathon uh, did it sort of mar- with a marathon distance um but you know we had a lighter car um, he trained a lot for it and yeah i know you know just um so the the actual the set world record was 33.93 kilometers within 24 hours um, uh, and you had to tow a 1.5 ton car, 1,500 kilograms. And uh, some guy in Slovakia, I think, had that record. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely um, knocked that one out of the park on the first evening uh, or the first day. Uh, I did it in about 19 hours. And then I just carried on pulling for another bit, just to, so 37 kilometers, just a nice round number. Um, it was getting very, very hot the next day. Uh, so I just decided then to have a little bit of a rest because I only had about 20 minutes kip in the first 24 hours. And then I carried on pulling for another 24 hours. Um, uh, so to, and then bringing that up a total distance, which was the second record, the furthest vehicle ever pulled for 53 kilometers. Um, again, there's people out there that do things like, the, I know someone's towing a vehicle 100 kilometers, but it's 1K per day in over 100 days. Whereas, yeah, 47 hours, my, my, my final timing was because I had to get in because we were going up flying afterwards at Blackbush Airport so the work within that flight window. So, yeah, so 53 kilometres and um, it's to date the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. <laughs> Mate, you're certainly smashing it out of the park. Just, just imagine what you, you could achieve had you been in the Marines. I would have um, just... Yeah, I think how good it would have looked, mate. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, mate. And this is it, you know, and it's always a good bit of friendly banter. Um, it's, it's just, uh, I just think, um, funny, quite a lot of the, quite a lot of the uh, bootnecks um, have, have you know, supported me in a lot of this stuff. It's absolutely fantastic. You know, I think I've, I've fallen into that crowd of, of, um, of, Soldiers that I never wanted to fall in the crowd of, you know, army wannabes, the type as I would have called them. But yeah, falling in that crowd. But as a physical training instructor, we're all sort of, we're there together, you know, all one. Yes, it is great. Um, 
I've had multi services, I think, support me on some of my challenges. And um, it's just wonderful. Some bootneck will turn up in a van out the middle of nowhere and then like literally attach themselves to you for two days and do everything that you ask of them to a T with no argument. Um, yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's good. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, but yeah, it was um, a, a rewarding event, I think, you know, and it just sets me up for the next and the next. And what, what can I do next is, is, where is where my head's at. Normally when I'm suffering in these events, I'm thinking, how can I make this worse? What can I do next? You know, and that, that's my sort of push through. So I've got a couple of things up my sleeve, um, which will be good. Um, just waiting for a couple of sign offs because I've got to go bigger, you know, uh, bigger and better. And, and these things um, take more coordination, more planning. I do it all myself, you know, and it's, it's that, that's probably the difficult part, the coordination and planning of it um, before, like, like for the example, the Guinness World Record, I got the car from BMW, so Barron's BMW sponsored the event, um, and then obviously the car comes with the set weight, you know what weight the vehicle is, then you have to bring it, that to the car to an independent weigh bridge, you have to video it getting weighed, and then you have to go in and get the print out, get it signed off. And then you have to find out when the scales was last, the weigh bridge was last calibrated um, and so on and so forth. Similar when we did the surveying of the land to do it, you had to find out when everything was last calibrated. You had the video, the survey being done. Um, it's just a lot of admin for, for something like, yeah, I said I'm not really that fussed in, to be honest. Do you find um, that these things cost you a, you know, do you have to put your hand in your own pocket? Yeah, quite a bit actually, and um, something me and my wife always talk about. <laughs> but ever, you know, they do. You know, when we go across the Isle of Wight, I generally pay for the, the support team to come across in the ferry, the fuel, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, it's, they do generally. Um, I, I I do have a really good guy brought on, so um, Ali from uh, Resilient Nutrition, um, and he's he's extremely helpful, and um, he tends to like now do a lot of. Apart from taking the, the fuel of resilient nutrition, the long range fuel, the other bits and pieces of that we need, he, he's generally just a generous guy and we'll go out and, and pick it up and bring it in. So it's not happening to. But yeah, generally it does cost me um, a couple of hundred quid, um, which, which I rather it wouldn't. So have a corporate sponsor, so then I can put that maybe a couple of hundred quid into, into the charity myself, you know, or, or something yeah. on those lines. Um, I but mention yeah. it because when, when I ran the length of the country, that co- that that if you took into account, I, I wasn't work, obviously couldn't work for thirty six days. Yeah, it the 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 cost to 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 me and my girlfriend was thousands. Really, you know, it, it, it is it is absolutely. It, and it was I, I've I've worked out now that these little two three day ones are quite good. Um, you know, if, especially if it's on a Friday, my work are generally quite generous because I'm doing it for a charity. They'll give me the Friday off, you know, and then I'm straight back into work on the Monday. Like, for example, that one started on Thursday at uh, midday. I finished it Saturday midday. Um, I, I stayed up that night to half two in the morning. At, at a we, black saw, we, saw, <laughs> we, saw, we saw the video evidence. Yeah, I know, I know. I thought I was going to go proper man down, but something just kept me carrying on. Um, so yeah, so that, that was good. And then, and then this week, to be honest, now I've been tired like most, most evenings. So, um, yeah. And generally I said, I get up at 20 past four. I've knocked that back to five o'clock this week because I'm, but it's still Monday morning, straight back into routine, getting up early and training. It's just that that's my setup. That's my vitamin in the morning ready for the day, you know? Yeah. It's funny. 420 is the, is the, 420 is the code for stoners, isn't it? I heard that, yeah, actually, before knowing it. But I'm just, uh, let's say, uh, as Jocko Willing would say, up before the enemy, you know? Yes. He always actually picked that time because he gets up at 0432 every day, up before the enemy. And I thought, we can't have the Americans beating us at this side of the pond. So um, I, I just went 420, you know? <laughs> I I heard that he used to put it on his um, Instagram, like his what his photo of his quite wife. a lot, yeah. Generally, and, and I, I I generally do that on my story, yeah. Um, followed by a by a video of some sort of dance tune from the nineties, banging out um, at about quarter to five in the morning on the way to the, the way to the gym. Let's talk about um, the charity angle. Who who 
who are you raising? Yeah, so um, this this year has been um, dedicated, and I'll continue to get dedicate my time to this charity until the money's raised because we're on a timeline with this one. Um, is so HABC, which is um, foundation, and it's uh, basically children with the world's rarest brain disease. And uh, there's only a couple of kids in the UK that have it, a um, couple of hundred in the world. And unfortunately, because of it's so rare, there's zero funding in the UK. So it all has to be done, um, you know, uh, via uh, fundraising. And, and that's when I got involved early in this year. You know, I, to date now, uh, I've, ra- I've raised, in the past sort of 12, 18 months, I've raised £57,000 for, for charity. But for this, and out of that 57 I've done 30, 37 has gone to this one. So, um, and that's just been two events this year. So it's, it, again, it's frustrating because um, I know the month there's money out there and you've just got to, got to find it somehow. And, and with like Instagram, you know, you're constantly asking people, I don't want to keep asking people every day for it. Um, I, I, I do find that a little bit cringing in myself, but I just have to be a bit bold about it, you know. We, um, as, as I put in my sort of last post, you may have seen it with me hugging Aggie over the line, the little girl, the 12-year-old Aggie. You know, um, I'll recover um, and I've got time, but she won't recover and she doesn't have time. And, and that's, that's just the harsh reality of it. So um, that's why I always ask people to sort of dig deep on it. And, and, and the, the, the condition sort of affects the white matter of the brain, the stuff that tells us to to eat and sleep and walk and talk. And, and Aggie used to be able to do that um, as, as, as the other kids. And they're all at different stages of this, um, of this journey for them. And um, she now can't do any of that, you know, um, she's completely wheelchair bound. She, um, yeah, she, she can't talk. She communicates literally with her thumb up, thumb down. Um, but she, she's mentally there. She understands it like a normal 12 year old girl. She knows what's happening, and that's the that's the sort of one of the, the sad things about it now. So it's um, yeah, it's just what what can I do? And this is where these crazy events come from. At now you know, it's what can I do that will make people think, holy shit, um, and raise an eyebrow and and get the media on board, and then um, then they'll see the charity, uh, and that that's I'm using these events and putting myself through the mill as a platform to raise raise the awareness. Yeah, so let's just take a moment um, to say a massive thank you to everyone that sponsors both me and Daz. Um, it, it, it's just a sad fact. No, not a sad. It, it, it's an issue that we can't get around to literally thank you all. Mm. But, but I see all the names when they come up on the Just Giving or whatever, and I recognise so many of them. And... and um, it's so kind that you support us guys as well, because we, yeah. you know, we've come through challenges and we, we have to maintain our mental health. And the fact that you buy into us and support us is just, um, it, it's, it's an equal thing to the fact that you're supporting in this case, you know, a young girl. Um, funny enough, Daz, my, we, we chat about this on the phone, but I ran a hundred miles of the coastal path last weekend to raise yeah. money for Chris, Christina Thomas, who was yeah. who's recovering from a brain tumor. That's the first extreme challenge I've done that hasn't been for a for a veterans charity. And when I was running along, when it got well, it was all hard. <laughs> yeah, but, but I did keep saying, "This isn't about me. This is you know, this was about." Christina, I, I, um, I, I don't know how much easier that made the challenge, but it certainly made it firm in my mind that I'm, I'm going to get this hundred miles in the bag. It, exactly that, you know, and on the five and fifty and this one, when I was struggling both times, I, I, I FaceTimed the mum to speak to Aggie and, and see her, and, and that was just all I needed, and it was just like someone had put my PTI vest on me, I just felt the strength and away I went, you know, it was just, um, all right, let's go. You know, it's one of those situations and you realize you're saying it is for, there's me moaning. Yes. I'm, I'm dragging this big, um, vehicle, heavy piece of metal behind me, but I, I like to see that, you know, that's the burden these, these people live with every single day, you know, dragging this weight around. 
And there's me moaning about us one step after the next. Yes, it hurt, but, you know, Aggie can't take a step. And, and I was like, basically, probably in a bit of all the military fashion way, get a grip of yourself, Darren, stop moaning, put your foot in front of the other. And, and it's amazing what the human body can do. It is just in those two days, the adaptation of the body to, to be able to do that was just phenomenal. Um, yes, okay, I've got a bit of a stress fracture going on and, and sore legs, but that'll recover. But it's phenomenal what, what it does and how it stays awake. And, you know, it's, it just amazes me. I, I learn every single time I do these things as, as yourself, probably. Yes, when you look at some of the challenges that people have in their lives, it makes you, you know, it, we need to be reminded, don't we, that those of us that are kind of say able-bodied and able-minded and and not 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 oh, treading carefully our speak here obviously but what i mean is those of us that can get out stay happy and just achieve a few things in our life it's it's a massive difference to yeah. know when you've got a, a terminal illness isn't it yeah a hundred percent yeah yeah mm-hmm. yes Agreed. so and, and that again just that there focuses my energy into doing the next and the next and the next so what was your stretch of the coastal path like? Because the bit that I chose, uh, it was just so ninja. It yeah. Was utterly, um, it, it was like the Royal Marines endurance course run, like up and down Woodbury Common like that, but for 100 miles. It, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly that. You know, it, it was the from sandbanks across in um, – and then right through to, to Weymouth, you know, it is, you hit all the roller coaster, you hit the Seven Sisters, you hit the lot, you know, through Lulworth Cove up and down and the Devil Steps, uh, War Barrow Hill, the worst hill in the world. Um, you know, every single time you've got that big, the big one, you've, you, you come down steps and up the other side to the, where the Royal Marines Memorial is um, and vice versa. And, I think the demoralizing thing for me, I was going that way and had to, I knew it was having to come back. <laughs> I was thinking, oh my God. So yeah, it's like 4,000 meters of, or whatever that is in feet and of elevation in, in, the, in such a short period, 43 hours, because the last bit was flat along the, along the sandbanks. Did you, um, did you sleep, sleep at all in that? Uh, I know you did at the end, but did you sleep in the 43 hours? Um, no, I had about, um, I had maybe two, 10 minute, shut my eyes. Yeah, just I just kept going um, and kept going. So um, the first night, luckily I had loads of people like sort of supporting and, and walking with me. And um, so I was doing it, I said self-sufficient. So I was carrying the stuff and had a few water, water breaks along the way. But um, I had like the whole like last marathon distance or marathon and a half, I had some guy, Ryan Zabin with me. Um, and, and he met me up to that point. But the first night, I didn't have anyone with me. And um, this guy, Ali, I mentioned resilient nutrition. He, he did some walking and back and with me back and forth just to, because it was like probably the first night the weather came in and it was just like, oh, this is just rubbish. You know, <laughs> it's like, what am I doing? And having to layer up, you no, know, after putting so much intensity in my body heating up, I was still having like, you know, waterproofs on. And I was just because of my, because my body was shutting down. So it was so cold. Um, and, and I just no energy to, to heat myself up. I was, I was layering up um, the first night. So it was uh, mental. But yeah, ninja as, 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 is a good, um, good descriptor. Does listen, I could talk all day about this. I'd love to talk more about kit and, 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 it sounds funny to people, for people listening, if you're not familiar with these kind of events, you know, hypothermia for me is a real big problem. Yeah. It, I, I can be hot and running along fine, but the second a bit of water comes out the sky and a whip, there's a bit of a breeze and then the tiredness just takes over you and the, maybe you're a bit famished and I can just start shivering uncontrollably and then it's, then it's, like, can I get my bivy out? And it yeah. really becomes an issue, and I'd love to chat chat more, but I'm conscious you've got another appointment. Yes, mate, yeah, no worries. I um, appreciate having me on and saying if um, if there is anyone listening, and, and, and uh, hopefully there's people listen to this, <laughs> and uh, if, if you want to support, you know, head on over to uh, Just Given. I'll send you the link, mate. 
Yeah. And I type in Darren Hardy and um, I, I pop up there. First one. Good. If you can um, WhatsApp me all, all your links, mate, and I'll just put, put them below. Sounds good, buddy. Yes. And let's, um, let's chat soon, brother. Yes, mate. Take it easy, mate. Keep being an absolute inspiration. I, um, we all love it, mate. Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Take it easy.